Good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning for some people. Um, a special show today. Uh, Stephen yeah, and I. Yeah. Not, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's not about New York, just so but, everybody knows. This yeah. Is not a New York show. This it's is a, a, we need the Pooh show. It, yeah, it's a it's a special show because it's not about New York. It would appear. Um, we did a show with a wonderful guest, uh, Rachel Park, um, uh, which we touched upon. I think some quite personal things for her, really, about some health issues that she'd had in the past. Um, and we also spoke about uh, yeah, uh, poo uh, transplants or poop transplants, and that got a lot of feedback. Um, a lot of people seem to be interested in that. We'd like to say right from the get-go that Stephen, myself, and Rachel are absolutely not qualified to discuss this in any medical way. The bits and bobs which we've, which we've found on the way through are we found purely because we find it an interesting subject. Uh, if you are affected in any way, shape, or form by any of the things that we discussed today, please contact a medical practitioner. I repeat, this is not medical advice. This is just discussing something, as we always try and say to our guests, as if we were discussing it at a birthday party um, or at a dinner party. You know, some uh, some dinner parties I've been to are absolute shit anyway. So this is probably a good way to uh, to go forward with it. But enough. And, and look, David's going to try to fix his headset so we don't have reverb. And, yep. and while he's doing that, we're going to Miss Rachel Park is back. And she has that beautiful, you know, the, 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 the plate thing with the sushi, or I'm sorry, the kimchi that everybody likes on our YouTube channel. But today, as we're going to plug her company, because she can put her name in her company now, um, right. what we're going to end up talking about, she and David especially, because apparently they are into poo transformation. And I don't mean Winnie the Pooh. So they're going to discuss how you poo, how not to poo and how not to do it yourself. And then, as David said earlier, if you're gonna do this, please go seek a doctor or a medical professional, because trust us, the three stooges that we're listening to right now, none of us are medical no, professionals. No clue. I'm, I'm only a gynecologist on the weekends. So um, with that being said, David and Rachel, this is gonna be you, and I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy this tremendously. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> I guess the technical term is yeah. fecal microbial transplant. So that, wow. um, and a lot of people, you know, on, on the web, when you look it up, it's called FMT. So if you put FMT, people know what you're talking about. Okay. And I'm going to put FMT into the cat, into the hashtags and see if we get a lot of people that are into like, you know, David, you're on mute. Um, a lot of like bondage. Think are going to be what I'd like to do um, is to, I found a, a, a really instructive film. Oh. Uh, very, very short film, three minutes from the John Hopkins uh, hospital. And you can't show, you can't show it. We can't show it. Nope, we don't yeah. we have to get the clearance from them. So you can tell everybody about it. We can give them the link. Okay. Okay, because that was probably the one of the most yeah, a very very simple thing <laughs> to uh, to uh, show, you know, what the issues are, etc. Uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But anyway, oh, we'll, we'll put we'll, we'll we'll put we'll put the link in for that. So. That, I thought that might be a good intro for everybody, but we'll go back to Rachel now. Sorry. Yeah, no, um, I mean, like I said, I'm not, like we said, I'm not an expert on this. I had just heard about it a long time ago, found it so interesting, and just did like a deep dive into it. Um, but I do know, again, that they only treat it right now for uh, C. difficile, which is Clostridium difficile, which is a bacterial infection that can be life-threatening if not treated. And um, the standard of treating it, so when you get C. difficile, it's because you, like overuse of antibiotics. And C. diff is super resistant to antibiotics. So it kills off other um, bacteria except for C. diff. And then you get this C. diff takes over in your gut and you get this really bad infection. And then to treat that is really a lot of stronger antibiotics. Um, that just destroys everything. And um, I think this strong antibiotics is only like 50% successful for C. diff. So people are saying, oh, what's another alternative that we can do or something to help after antibiotics, even if it is successful, you're left with no bacteria, good bacteria in your gut, no um, microbiota. So they did fecal transplants. And um, it, so now. Now this is the part that I get back like a five-year-old. I'm so yeah. 
<laughs> so the fecal <laughs> transplants, I, I think here, I have it in my notes, just that okay. it, they say it's an 85% success rate of preventing a recurrence of C. diff. So, okay. so here's my question to you two, because you, yeah. apparently you're both in the poo, and that's a whole nother show about stat and BDS and M, and we'll do that one later. <laughs> but anyway, so the question I have then is how do you do this, the, the FMT, how do you do the transfer to go oh. from person to, I'm assuming person, or to elephant to person, or however it's done? Yeah, there's, um, I, I think there's three main ways that they do it, which is um, through encapsulation form. Okay. So you put it in, and I think it's frozen, and then you swallow it. Oh, okay, so it's not and like suppository. So then the other way is a uh, enema. Okay. Or yeah. a colonoscopy, and oh, I guess there's four. There's endoscopy too. Okay. And an enema, I think you have to do like multiple sessions of it because it's more easy to kind of like evacuate it easier. Okay. The colonoscopy kind of just goes straight into yeah. your gut. So, um, what they do is they add it to a saline uh, solution. Okay. It's, uh, so the poo comes from somebody who has a suitable poo to, for transplantation uh, for transportation and what they do is that's tested for everything i mean it's like tested seriously for everything to okay. make sure that is that there's no other uh, yeah, that the person it's coming from is healthy enough to offer it to you they okay. put it in this they put it in the saline uh, solution and then they they just you know sp literally spurt that into the into the the lower gut uh, is it to lower and uh, intestines and it's um yeah it it flushes out what's what is bad and replaces it with with what's good okay and so um, now you've had this apparently or you both have read about it which one are we yeah. going to i've done yeah. no. <laughs> so. she's done the she comes not only did i like it but i liked it so much i did it six times I, so, yeah. I went into just um like i said I was doing um, Reddit forums and just looking at all the people who tried it or curious about it. And yep. it's um, it now the people who do Reddit, a lot of them were doing DIY, which again is oh good. I don't know how um, reliable that is, but <laughs> they were talking about sending it to a lab, getting the screening done because it can be life threatening if you're not doing it. If you don't get a donor who's been cleared and who is um a good match by having no pathogens in there that right. can cause illness you could die oh, so well, there's yeah. a risk <laughs> and yeah. um but yeah a lot of people are doing it because again it's only um used for c diff and there's people using it for a host of other things they because they're suffering so much from other issues right. and um researchers are studying um to see if it helps with like um Crohn's colitis celiac uh even depression and okay. obesity all these different things so people who are suffering from it they're like well you know what let's let's just try it let's let's do our DIY and a lot of people are having success and feeling better okay again yeah. you know you go at your own risk <laughs> exactly because I think one of the we have a poo bank here I think in Holland which I found out about again last week. Uh, I know this one in the US, and I seem to remember when I first heard about this was via a program on the BBC, um, where there was uh, an American uh, doctor who was just making an open plea to everybody to uh, to donate their poo, so it could be tested and could be added to to this bank. And it's it's a bit of a social no no. So yeah, to to do it yourself, no, that's you know. I, I, I'm, as I say, I'm not a medical practitioner, but the idea of trying to do this as a DIY thing, I think you're pretty, I think you're putting your life seriously in risk. Yeah. Well, so, I thought, yeah, I, I was, I don't ever comment on Reddit, but I was like, hey, I say try to get yourself into a trial with these, you, yeah. know, you know, scientists who are researching it for the condition that you want to fix um, instead of doing it yourself. Just try to get yourself into trials. And most yeah. of the people are too embarrassed to talk to their doctors about it. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I think it, uh, it seems to be a treatment for, I mean, I've, again, I heard about this this gentleman, he, I, I, I think he was Australian. I might be wrong. Um, and he had reached the stage with his wife. His wife was so sick. She was at the, you know, certainly at the last five, six months of her life. 
again, with all these stomach issues, with all, you know, not being able to keep the food in, the diarrhea, the, the you know, the incredibly quick uh, uh, loss of body weight, which, you know, you, you just go into a, a terrible state. And he, he'd been through the whole thing, you know, he'd done this, he'd done that, done the antibiotics, the whole, the whole shebang. And somewhere along the line, he found out about this and he decided, well, he mentioned it, said it to his wife, well, shall we do it? And she said, well, you know, literally what at this stage do we do both of us have to lose? And they did it. And it was amazingly successful. And within about two or three months, she was virtually sort of, you know, back to 70 percent of her, of her health where she was at the point of death. And that absolutely fascinated me because I, well, I have family members which have chronic uh, issues with with food and with the diarrhea and keeping stuff in and losing body weight. So it was something that I was sort of, you know, thought, okay, I need to find out a little bit more about it. And so that, yeah. And when we spoke last time, of course, you mentioned yourself that you'd you'd been struggling for years. And for, for many, as you said, a lot of doctors don't know about it. Um, I was reading a report, I think, I think 2013 was the first controlled uh, trials that they ever did on this. And yeah, there are a lot of, Little, few countries have them. I know Eastern, old East Bloc countries in Europe have clinics where you can go privately and have it done. Um, but yeah, it could it could literally be life saving for for a lot of people. But and, yeah. if I sorry, not, no, no. If I'm not mistaken, the reason we got on this topic is because we were talking about here we're going to plug Rachel's company um, because as she drinks water and see now Rachel because we're using this system everybody sees everything you're doing. And not, <laughs> Awesome. I have to drink my water. You know? you gotta drink your water. So we started this dialogue and, and it was kind of funny when we did it, but we were doing it because we were promoting her kimchi product. So yeah. now, so here we'll plug it a little bit. So now my question is, we're just going to call it FMT because if I have to call it anything else, it's going to be five years old and I can't help it. So the FMT, so is the kimchi then a way to help with the people's stomach and whatever, because as you guys talked about on, on your first show, um, it gives you good, it gives you a better stomach. It cleans up the ass, kind of cleans up your stomach. So does that prevent you from having to do an FMT or is it just one of the, you know, it's sort of like you go running every day, you eat healthy. It's just a preventative thing. So kimchi. In your opinion, because none of us are doctors. I mean, yeah, just, I mean, I would say if you're looking into FMTs for yourself, you're pretty much your gut is at a point yeah. where, nothing is going to help right. and even probiotics can upset you um like i was on reddit reading one guy l acidophilus uh, i can't say it correctly l acidophilus okay is um one of the main uh bacteria in kimchi that's helpful was giving him major issues oh, wow. so that's why he did fmts and kind of start from a healthier gut once your microbiome is better then you um eat kimchi and eat um all the prebiotics and probiotics to supplement a better uh microbiome for your gut gotcha. uh, yeah i think I, I think rachel's product is, is something that you'd sort of take on the way up you know after you've been um you know it's, or it's, it's on the way down could go either way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think a lot of people at the time they reach the point where they're going to go into F FMT anyway, that you know, uh, antibiotics, because the first thing the doctor says uh, is, oh, have a paracetamol, um, right. sleep better, change your diet. Mm -hmm. Now you do all that, doesn't help. Uh, then he put you on the antibiotics, and and the antibiotics work too. They are just they're just too good, you know. They 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 don't they sort of steam clean the whole thing out. And then the only thing that seems to be left over are all these bad bugs. They're the only things that the antibiotics can't get to. And so by taking the antibiotic to solve the problem, you know, for some people, it actually makes the pro problem a lot worse because it's that, that, that bad bug that still gets left mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the intestinal tract. Well, and, and so, yeah. Antibiotic use in general really has a bad effect on our gut. Yeah. There's so many great things that antibiotics do when you need it. But we're over-prescribed antibiotics, so then you get this resistance to it, and then your gut just can't fight off the bad bacteria that's growing in there. And um, 
Yeah, I, I know a lot of times, even with my pets, when they have something, they get, it's a viral infection and they're giving antibiotics or I am have a viral infection and I'm giving it. I'm like, I'm not taking an antibiotic for a viral infection. That's not going to help, but you're still prescribed it. Right. And it's, it's interesting. And I say this to a lot of my friends, I'm like, why are you taking an antibiotic for a virus? Right. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Well, the easiest thing that the, it's kind of like, you know, they talk about Fauci and when we had uh, COVID, right? It's like they tell mm -hmm. you, your doctor tells you or someone in authority tells you it's good and people are like, oh, okay, and they do it. And where other people are starting to research and go, no, it's not that good. It's, you know, I, it, it's very interesting. When I was in Chinatown a few months back in New York, you know, someone was saying, oh, they have this problem. So we went into the, the herbalist and he's like, okay, you're gonna take this, you're gonna take this, you're gonna, and literally, you know, a week later, you're better than you probably would have been if you went to an American doctor and got a whole bunch of stuff. So these ancient remedies seem to actually work much better. Guess than, what FMT is? Yeah, it's, well, yeah. sure. It I remember started on the in China like 2000 years ago. They, they've been yeah. doing yeah. FMTs just in a different way. I don't know how they did it back then. But. Well, the, 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 fir the first thing that's it's registered, right I think, yeah. is uh, a fourth century. Uh, it's the first time that uh, that people were using donor feces as a you know as a way of counteracting food food poisoning and diarrhea and a couple of hundred years later was, uh, in another uh, book um uh, in the ming dynasty they were talking about what they called then yellow soup mm. or golden syrup soup and uh, which they put um you know uh, fresh or dried or fermented uh, poo into uh, into into uh, boiled water and made a soup out of it mm. and people were drinking it not recommended to be done in the right. 21st century for for everybody um but so yeah so it's uh, just people experimenting with this and and you know literally um, you know trying everything possible to yeah. uh, to to yeah. set to settle their guts down it's it's it's, it's, it's begun why, over centuries why did i start looking at, my ex had actually first heard of FMTs and mentioned it to me because I was suffering from SIBO and um, and uh, I was suffering from endometriosis, which it, FMTs is not going to help endometriosis. No, no. That's why ultimately I did not um, think of it as an option for myself because SIBO, it doesn't help either because SIBO is bacteria. It's good bacteria too. It's not bad bacteria. SIBO is just bacteria in the wrong intestine it's in your small intestine so yeah. doing a fmt is not going to fix it because you're going to still have it stuck in your small intestine and it's just going to exacerbate the condition i was like okay not for me but still very interesting <laughs> so and, that, um, and, and unfortunately for you you brought it up on the last time you were on and i was like oh we're gonna run with yeah. the show because it was funny because you mentioned yeah. that someone was listening to a podcast I said, oh, listen to our podcast. They're like, this is awesome. And you got to the poo part. And they're like, why didn't you guys go down that road? I'm like, that's a whole show into itself. We're not, she's talking about kimchi. Well, and all. Well, David brought it up. And I was like, yes, I know it. <laughs> so because yeah. of that, hence we're here today. talking. Yeah, about but, but like I said, it's one of those things that um, I'm, I'm glad we, we have an opportunity, all of us, an opportunity mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to speak about it. Because it's like, it's like been a, a bit, still a bit of a no-no. Um, and if this just is, uh, hopefully we'll be able to put a few links on the bottom uh, of this video. We know how that works. Um, and again, we are not endorsing anything. Uh, these are just things of which we. Well, we uh, are only, only, only her, only, only. Just so oh, you yeah, know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but we're, but we're not endorsing anything else. I think it's just um, you know, if we can if we can point somebody in the right direction. Right. Uh, even if you just go into Google and then just go into, well, I think it's called poop, because uh, because yeah, Americans like to t say it nicely. I did poo transplant, but you can go into Google and put poop transplant. How about and FMT? You get FMT, FMT as well, and this stuff will come up uh, uh, pretty quick, and you'll see, <laughs> see that the stuff is going to come up, help you get to the right end. This is really good. So I don't have to say anything. Well, you you, I, I was going to say you could help you get to the bottom of things, but I'm not going to yeah. go that far. <laughs> It's like a proctologist is listening, he's going to be thrilled because this is a job where you start at the bottom and stay there. But yeah. he's probably going to be so you would see a proctologist for this, I would think. Then, a, a, a gastroenterologist, yeah. proctologist, yeah, I'm um, not sure. It's just it's amazing to think where it'll be in a few years with more yeah. research. 
because yeah, like they're saying it, that it, 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 it help maybe with Alzheimer. It, there's right. a um, yeah. yeah, Alzheimer's, autism, and uh, just depression. If it could really help those things, how amazing would it be? It's like you know, go go to the doctor, ask for a fecal transplant. You know, you just put you to sleep, get a colonoscopy, and it's. You're you're feeling better. Like that would be amazing. Uh, yeah. I mean, it would appear that the biggest problem is is the poo banks. You know, that people mm -hmm. don- donating their poo. Again, that's you know, I mean, how do you do that? I I don't know. Maybe that's something that Mr. Google can 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 help out our listeners with. No idea, but there's there, there are certainly institutions in the U.S. and in Europe that are crying out for people to donate the stuff, and it's it's. Yeah. You know, you can go and it's a bit like, uh, I say, no, I'm not going to say it's, no, I'm not, I was about to say something else. Um, it will be tested. Let's put it that way. So not everybody's poo is right. going to be, um, you know, the right stuff to use. Um, but if you, but if you feel, process. Yeah. yeah, if you feel that this is something you, uh, you can contribute towards, this is one of those wonderful anonymous things, you know, that you could literally change people's lives mm -hmm. um, by just by donating, uh, you know, and, literally your own waste product. And just to let you know, because Google is very sophisticated because it does nothing on everything on Google is, of course, true. Um, when you look for any poo bank, it comes up stool banking for, and it gives me 42,000 different medical terms for it, but it's called stool banking, not poo banking. Just so okay. you're listening, okay. looking and you want to bank your stool, there you go. And not the stool you sit on, unless you're in Key West, then maybe. But anyway, this is stool banking. This is, this is a two hip, this is two hip jokes for this crowd. Anyway, this is still stool banking is what it's called. And when we see you this Thursday at the, at the show, we won't be talking about poo, only kimchi. <laughs> right. I show on kimchi and everything else that's there will be no stool. Well, if you eat kimchi, it you'll have healthy poo poos. There you go. So. <laughs> we'll say that. So yes, yeah, so yeah. it's called stool banking for those people that are interested in it. When you Google search it, there are, I did it while we were speaking, there is literally 50 companies, uh, hundreds of articles and be by reputable, you know, not like the Stephen Dave newspaper, but real newspapers that did things in medical journals and whatnot. And there's a whole bunch of places that talk about stool banking and how you do it and why you need it and blah, blah, blah. So for anybody that would be interested in that. Uh, you know yeah. what, um, I did read that a lot of the donors that get, um, that are healthy donors are on a plant-based or vegan diet. Oh, wow. Um, cause they have less pathogens in their stool. Um, okay. It, I don't know if that's true, but I just saw a few sites that said that. I'm like, so all the vegans out there, go donate your poo. And see now, if you question, is this like a blood bank? Am I going to get paid to give them my poo? Because if that's it, I'm going to like make phone calls right after this show because I get paid by New York, of course. That's twice. <laughs> um, and I expect my check people. Um, so, and if I'm going to get paid to give poo, are you kidding? I'm going to be going to. No like, clue. Okay, Oh, but if you find out, let me know. <laughs> you can be the first, day, first try. We'll put a little tag at the end. You get so much per pound. So that'll <laughs> but to me, it's like, so you do the poo. And let's just assume you do it at home. I must, you don't, it's not like a sperm bank, I guess. And you do it at home. And then do you, you zip it up and send it? To, I mean, that's just, so. I mean, and then I'm sure well, there's, there, a there, there, there's a whole procedure that goes with uh, that. I mean, I mean, I have to have my poo checked uh, every year. Okay. So, um, because I had intestinal cancer, so what they do is they just send this kit in the post. Okay. And and then you have, uh, you know, you have your poo. You dip this sort of uh, stick into the poo. Okay. Seal it in. Uh, it goes into a canister, which is sealed up, and I put it literally back into the post. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And, 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 and then they send you a letter a couple of weeks later saying, yeah, uh, you know, everything's tickety boo. But um, yeah, you That's always think. What, David? It's tickety boo. Tickety boo, or, or I should say tickety poo. Really. Okay. Bed knobs and broomsticks. Rachel's too young to re to remember that Disney movie. You and I are the only two who remember. Wait, what boo. movie is this? Bed knobs and broomsticks, and it starred um, the lady who just died from Murder She Wrote. Angela, yeah. what's that? Yeah, name? Angela something, right? But it was called <laughs> Bed knobs and Broomsticks, and she there was a whole song about tickety bickety boo. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad Disney taught you something, Stephen. But it's a lot. Old, it's just, it's a statement a lot older than that, I think. 
Well, you know, I, listen, I remember Steamboat Willie and I used to have scotch and cigars together. That tells you how old I am. So there you yeah. go. Well, so. we could do a whole nother show about you and Steamboat, I, Steamboat I, Willie. I, I think I've actually heard of the movie, so. Steamboat uh, Willie or, or Bed Knobs and Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Or... Yeah. The 60s when I, was, when I was a kid. It was awesome. Yeah. So, well, I was, you know. Are, I mean, we, are, we, are we being paid to promote Disney as well now, Stephen? Yeah. Is that, uh, I tell you, I'm a Jew. We're going to get made to promote everybody. This is just the way it works. So. Okay. okay. We're promoting Rachel. Rachel's you know, me, I'm, Rachel, I'm getting kimchi balls on Thursday. What are you kidding? I'm standing there and you're going to eat all the kimchi balls. I'm going to be the comic in the world. But if going back to poo samples. Okay. If yeah. you have never sent your poo sample to a lab to be tested for parasites, I say you should do it. People should do it yearly. Just because. Yeah. Um, well, it's an, it's an age thing in Holland. I think after you're 60, uh, it's a standard thing. Oh, you've been doing it for um, 50 years then. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. 51, actually. <laughs> People are doing the math now. They're like, what? Yeah. I, is that possible? Yeah. I'm, I must admit, I found it slightly uh, intimidating. Uh, the first time round, you know, because um, you know, obviously you you, uh, you when, when you go to the water closet, and um, normally everything just sort of disappears, uh, but but you have to find a way of of not letting it get any moisture than it, when it comes out of your body, so you can put the the plastic sort of dipstick into it. Wait, you have. I have to catch poop from my autistic clients to test their, to send off their samples. And there you, go. you put some saran wrap under the toilet seat bowl so that there you it catches go. the poop. And I, I, I challenge anybody, challenge anybody to have this sort of conversation on the internet. I I'm challenge them. breakfast later and I'm having this conversation at breakfast with some people just for fun. Yeah. I want to see how they react. So, so, so Rachel, would you just like to repeat that again so that for, for people who didn't pick it up first time around? No, seriously, because it's no, important. Really. You you put some saran wrap under the toilet seat and, cup and put the seat back over so that it kind of has a little give to it, not too tight. And so you go and it'll catch your poo without it dropping in and getting wet. And from there, you can just collect the poo sample easier. And again, I used to do this for my autistic clients. And it was interesting because he was like, why is there saran wrap on the toilet? What are you trying to do? And um, yeah, they, 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 they kind of, you get this sort of, uh, in, it's more of a diagram, uh, you know, folder that you get when you when the kit arrives in the post. But these are the, the practicalities of doing that sort of thing. It just says, make sure that it doesn't get uh, super moist by going into the water. Also, the water sometimes has chemicals in it, of course, because people have used chemicals yeah. in their toilets, yeah. which yeah. completely screws up the sample. So I, the first time I was there, I, I, I was scratching my head and I was thinking, well, how am I going to do that? You know. So yeah, a, a great, a great tip. And yeah. and who and who do you ask that to? You know, that's that's. Uh, you can't just say, oh, oh, by the way, I need to have this poo sample. Um, how can I collect my poo? Go and ask your neighbors. They're not going to be able to tell you. Right? Well, really, if you go to Hilga's House of Pain, they do this for you. It's just a little extra, and they'll, whatever you need in the world of poo. I, I read it in a book, <laughs> so you're totally fine there. But no, this is, it's interesting. It's like a taboo subject, but it's interesting. Um, and if it really helps just one person, then. Well, they, I, would, I would challenge that, Stephen, as to why it would be taboo. Why is it to right. I don't think most people talk about poo in FMT. I mean, like it's maybe in America, every uh, nothing's taboo to me. You know me well enough, David. Rachel. Oh yeah, does. exactly. That's why I didn't understand why you said that. But most because in America we're still a very much Puritan society. We don't want to talk about sex. We don't want to talk about gay. We don't want to talk about this. We don't want to talk about. We talk about nothing. We talk about like what's in our little box. So I think when people go outside the box, for people it's uncomfortable. Like. I don't think you're going to hear a dinner conversation one night. So tell me about your stool bank. Um, some people will like, I don't really care, but other people, I think it is. I'm like when um, it was this 30 years ago when my uncles all had heart surgery, we had literally having steak dinner and they're all unbuttoning their shirts going, look what my doctor did. And they're showing you like their quadruple bypass. It was showing, it's like, there's no, there's no filter, which is cool. Cause then the people that needed to know about it knew, but I think in America for the most part, you don't. I think that's changing because the younger generation doesn't have any decorum, so they talk about whatever, which is well, fine. That's what I was going to say. But, uh, 
I do know, like when I watch TikToks and there, more people, younger generations are so much more open about yeah. talking about, and, you know, showing people with their, um, oh, what is that? Their butt cam. The, the poop bags, because, right. you know, so yeah, many clo 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 yeah. 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 And, um, you know, they're normalizing it. It's like, there's nothing wrong with this. This is part of but life. Everyone knows. Right. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that we're that society where it has to be in a box. So that was kind of my right. point. It's like, you know, I don't, I have no qualm, but, and if you've watched our show, you know that, talk about any subject, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm okay with all that. This is one of these subjects, it's a serious subject. You know, we can make fun of it a little bit, but literally if it helps right. somebody, they can go to John Hopkins and read right. the art. They, they can do all this. But if we were having a really serious show, I'm not going to be here. But it's fun to make fun of it to an extent, but it, right. it helps us bring it to light. And someone says, wow, my stomach really does hurt. You mm -hmm. know, I've, eat, I've eaten kimchi, I've tried this, I've tried that, and it still is bad then they can go to whatever specialist they need to. And if they go, hey, I want to do FMT and it helps them, or they can call a stool bank and whatever, that's better. You know right. what I mean? So at the end of the day, yeah. it's nothing more than like, I guess, a, this is our public service then. Right. I would defy you, I would defy you not to classify somebody at a dinner party who who is sitting next to you who says, I'm a director of a, of a poo bank. I mean, who would you? Yeah. You have the most interesting conversations with him ever or her. I want, now we're going to go after a stool bank director with, and we'll have you and Rachel and I on with them. And we'll <laughs> Let's, let Joe's us do that. Let us do that because we're, we're just talking funny stuff and it's a serious business. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that he'll be able to enlighten us. But here's what's really funny. Rachel told me more about the, like the different terminologies in the poo and the FMT and all than I have ever known in my entire life. So this little 30 minute plus dialogue between the three of us to, that goes out to everyone else, I've learned more about it. So if anybody ever said anything, I'm like, I'm not an expert. Our kimchi guru is, did you put that <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Um, so, but you can go look at that, you know, stool bank and better that. So if there's a whole bunch of, I mean, you know, I think it's, I think it's a fascinating subject. Aside from the FMT, even like testing your stool just for yourself, for your, I think every, person every adult every child should do it because you know a lot of people have parasites and don't even know it especially if you're eating organic right you can, a lot of people have tapeworms for like 20 30 years and have no clue and then they get their you know they're losing weight they're feeling a little you know something and then they get their poo finally tested and it's oh well you've got worms and it's such an easy fix <laughs> and um <laughs> What I found fascinating about moving to Europe is that in the UK, we had what was traditionally called uh, the, the water closet. So it had then this 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 uh, reservoir of water in the bottom on the on the U bend. So when you when you, uh, you know, had your, your, your poo or whatever, it would disappear into the water and then you flush it all away um, in Europe and in Germany in particular. They have what I always used to affectionately call a log inspection platform. So you have this this situation where it comes straight on down on firstly onto a plateau, and then when you flush the toilet, it then washes the whole thing down through the water now the other side. And it would appear that the Germans, again going back to what you were saying, Rachel, very valid point, also find it to be really important to regularly, even if you just look, even if you just glance. To see, you know, is it the right color? You know, has it got blood in it? Um, you know, are there other bits and bobs that uh, that shouldn't be in it? Yeah. So it, it's it, it's it's a fascinating fascinating subject. But yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think there's books about this for children now. I see it's like, is your poo good? Or and it shows you um, how to look at your poo, like David said. Um, to make sure it's the right color, size, and all consistency. So it is important. You got to have healthy poos to have a healthy life. Yeah, because what goes in comes out, as they say. Wow, so um, that is. What's it? This is. A I, show. And then we recycle I know. Your I, poo for FMT as a donor. Let every we should recycle everything so that put it to good use. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, many, many, many years ago, I lived in a commune, and they had. Um, what you live? Uh, you live where? Where'd you live? Yeah, it, it, not it, just a, just an, an an alternative lifestyle commune. Okay, you realize right? there's a show on that. I'm That's a different, different show too that I'd love to hear about. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> and uh, to my amazement, uh, they they literally locked all the toilet doors 
in this there was a three or four cottages to which we all lived in and all the toilet doors were, were were locked and stuff was kept in it but they were never used and my first reaction was well where is where's the loo they said well it's it's outside and what they've done is that on a series almost of tram lines all the way across this huge piece of land at the back they had uh, this uh, sort of a toilet block and it uh, and underneath it, it was full of you only use sand you never use water used uh, biodegradable uh, paper and when the 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 hole at the bottom got to a certain height they'd literally put uh, more sand on the top a little bit more earth and move the the toilet block across and in the year or so one and a half years i was sort of in and out of the commune uh, it kind of moved its way halfway down a field and at the beginning, where when I first went there many years ago, uh, right, the year or so when I first went there, uh, first got involved with this, um, that whole thing was just was just full of, you know, vegetables and plants and and fruit and everything. The whole garden went absolutely crazy. But uh, you know, ninety nine percent of the people that were in the commune, apart from me at the beginning, were all vegetarians. So, yeah, what goes in comes out. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. good, because when Russia does that nuclear thing in the Ukraine and it's the end of the world, now I know how to plant my garden. So I got that looking to look forward to. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like I say, don't so, sit next to me. Don't sit next to me at a, at a, uh, at a dinner party, Stephen. I, I'm well aware. So before we leave, Ms. Grace, <laughs> thank you for coming and doing this. But yes, Rachel, go, super. plug your kimchi. Because, and I don't see a shirt with kimchi guru on it yet. I'm just saying. <laughs> That says you're the kimchi guru. See, even below it says our guest today is Rachel. I, I see that. Guru, <laughs> and I plugged the, our last YouTube show, Kimchi Guru, and I'm going to plug this one as well, Kimchi. So when I see you on Thursday, I'm going to be like, "There's the Kimchi Guru," and you won't have a shirt. And people are going to be like, "What? Like you don't know?" I mean, you know. I'm going to have to make a sign or something real quick. Something. So, because I'm going to make sure that everybody starts calling you the Kimchi Guru. So. I'm gonna study up a lot more on kimchi <laughs> more and more and more listen no one else is calling themselves the kimchi guru and you came on our show so as far as we're concerned you're the kimchi guru. i am i am yeah you are indeed and, and again let's let's have some nice uh, little short films for you preparing this stuff because people are fascinated by it you know yeah, i That's, mean uh, again i kimchi cooked raw or fermented it's so good in every form and watching i love watching people eat kimchi on um yeah. that's a whole nother show where there's those things called mukbangs where you right. people watch people eating it's well i i did mention it i did mention it in how uh here in house i said to annette oh um uh yeah i've interviewed this lady with kimchi and i said i had no idea what it was which i didn't um so i had to google after show as well mm -hmm. uh you know because i'm just a you know farmer's boy from 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 suffolk um, um but yeah, she said, oh, didn't you know, Dave? Didn't you, have you not to uh, know? Um, so yeah, you opened my my eyes up to a whole new world. So uh, and that's very difficult that. that he wears because they're very thick. So for him to see yeah. those glasses. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I always say when people first try kimchi, either you hate it or you love it right away. And if you hate it, you grow to love it. Right. You start to crave it over time the more you try it and try it. And I have a friend um, who designed my company logo. I forgot to say that last time, but she designed the logo for me. And um, what um, what is her name? Do, are you going to mention the friend's her name? name? Vicky. Vicky. Hi, um, Vicky. He's on our website too. Hi, Vicky. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Vicky. He, her brother did not like kimchi. and But over time, he liked it in fried rice, and he makes right. really good kimchi fried rice. And... Over time, he would start slowly eating my kimchi because, you know, she was helping me. And I'd be like, well, here's kimchi. I pay you in kimchi. And he started eating it more and more. He is now like, where's my kimchi? I need more kimchi. And he loves it. So you start from not liking it to loving it. So I don't, we, yeah. we, we, we get the refrigerator. In fact, that night, we actually had... Um, we made Asian food because what do you make in an Asian household? Asian food. Um, so we had Asian food and my stepson, what did he grab out of the refrigerator? Kimchi. So we mixed kimchi with it. was beauty. Everybody like that was it. I was laughing because I was like, we just did a show with Rachel. So it was, you know, very cool. So it was, and then we got a couple of days later for the, those of you that haven't seen our shorts, we have two beautiful kimchi rolls um, on a plate. 
and people are loving it. It's like 3000 views. And I know on um, Instagram, it got a whole bunch and people are still liking it. And it's already what, two weeks old, that video. People are still liking it to this day on our, on our Instagram. That is so cute. <laughs> you'll, as my grandmother would say, you'll say more. Um, and then Thursday, when we see you and for this people watching this Thursday's already passed, but Thursday we'll record anybody eating kimchi or whatever. And we'll do some shorts with that and have a good time with that and put it up for so people to see. <laughs> And I know, we, for we, Thursday. We I'm to, sorry that David can't be here. Do we have to get you a t-shirt though that says kimchi guru or a baseball cap or something? Finally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on it. Uh, gonna... I have I have I have odds that she won't have it on Thursday. I won't have it on Thursday because I don't have enough time to get to the printer. <laughs> but I will I will work on it for the next time I see you past Thursday. I'm gonna be like, so I don't see the kimchi guru thing. So she is the kimchi guru, people. Um, all her links are here and below as David likes to go below. Um, they'll we'll also, this will be also a podcast, I think maybe. Um, so it'll go out. So if you have questions about FMT, call a medical professional. We are not medical professionals. Like I said, only a guy in the college on the weekends. Um, Rachel has a real job that she's the kimchi guru. She can tell you everything about kimchi. David is David and we love him. So, but so all of us know nothing about what we spoke about all our own opinion. But if you have questions, look it up. We'll give you a whole bunch of links and things that you guys can figure stuff out. And if not, just reach out to John Hopkins. Cause yeah, they, I'm about to look at that John Hopkins video after this. <laughs> so yeah, and we'll post the link to the John Hopkins video so people can watch the John Hopkins video and whatnot. Yeah. So we don't endorse this. We don't condone it. We nothing. We're just bringing it out there as an FYI yeah. because we thought it was interesting, it was interesting. to listen to it. Yeah. And so, I, I think, I, and I'm sure there are lots of other hospitals in the U.S. Apart yeah. from the John Hopkins, uh, it just so happens that uh, that was the first one I found, and um, and unfortunately because of all the copyrights, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I haven't been able to show it. But it's a little three minute, little three minute film, and it just you know all the little, all the little pieces that I had in my head about how to explain it all was just done in this animated three minutes. So and you, know, it, you could just run it as a ticker tape. You could just get www dot whatever. Um, not now. Yeah, not now. Right. Yeah. Now. It's too late. Rachel's got, Rachel's got kimchi to make. She's got a big She's got, she's got stuff to do. Yeah. I've she's got, got, stuff. I've got a prep for Thursday. <laughs> so. people, yeah. And she knows that 50 of her kimchi balls, they're going to me because um, I'm going to be eating them. So, you know, I got there's things. She's a busy girl and she's got to call a printer to get the kimchi guru shirt. I have to get the kimchi guru shirt. She's got yeah. stuff. Yeah. She's a busy lady yeah. now. So. I'm going to make kimchi guru merch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to help you with merch. What else do you want from me? Do you want us, to, as I say, to we all the guests that we get, do you want us to actually do the whole show for you as well? So, <laughs> we're trying to help you with merch. Rachel, always a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you on thank Thursday. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank yes, you. Good, good, good luck, uh, Rachel, at Tasty's uh, at, oh, at the market. Thank you. It'll be fun. I'm just yeah. wondering if it's going to be cold. It's gotten yeah. cold all of a sudden. So It's, it's 10 Celsius now, Dave. That's what it what is. It, what, what is it now? We're, we're at 10, 11 Celsius, and I think it's going to be maybe 12 Celsius um, on Thursday night. Is that cold then? <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, for those people, that's about 50, 54, or 53 degrees. It's, it's cold for all of a sudden because we were at like 90s, 100s, and then boom, 30, 30 Celsius. Yeah, we are at 30. 30 oh, 30. 30. I know it's dropping. Okay, okay. Because, yeah. well, I, I was seeing today that, uh, well, I mean, it, it's 20 yard here today. Um, oh, yeah. You know, where we are, it was, it was 20 yesterday. So there we are in October. But it's, it's what they call here uh, an Indian summer for us. So we get a few yeah. days of glorious sunshine i think we have to call that a native american summer here now because we have to be politically correct so i'm just saying yeah um, well yeah well it's another okay. it's another sort of another sort of indian there you go. <laughs> well if if it is cold come get a rice bowl because it's nice and hot and it'll keep you warm hey yeah and on and on that and on that rice bowl rice bowl bum, bombshell bombshell <laughs> you can see where mine's stuck today and then Thank also you. Feel free to ask Rachel about FMT all day long. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> While I'm uh, making you some kimchi. <laughs> a pleasure. Talk to you both later. Thank Cheers. you, guys. Stay on, Rachel. <laughs>